guys, eight amazing seasons, 1,360 episodes. 1,360 episodes. I was on this show from 29 to 38 and like technically like just a few months shy of 39. Almost a whole decade spent running my mouth. What's up you guys? So today is the day that our last episode of The Real airs. It is the 1,360th episode. After nine years and eight seasons, it is our farewell episode. And I figured I'd jump on here to talk to you guys about some of my favorite moments on The Real and some of my not so favorite moments on The Real and just what I will miss and what my experience has been for almost a decade on daytime television. I can't believe that when I first started auditioning for The Real, I was 28 years old. I was living in New York City. I knew that if I got the job, I would have to move to LA. And if I'm being honest, I was really excited about it. Crazy enough, I always wanted to be a daytime talk show host. I grew up loving shows like Jenny Jones, Richard Bay, Sally Jesse Raphael was obviously my favorite, but I also loved Ricky Lake, Maury Povich, Jerry Springer. You get the vibes. And I actually created my own show when I was like 10 or 11 years old called The Adrian Show. And it's kind of crazy looking back at the footage because you can see that I took being a daytime talk show host very seriously. I literally created my own theme song. I had my own logo, The Adrian Show, a graphic that I created myself on my computer. Mega makeover. I, I was I was very serious about the fade out and the fade in of my theme song. So obviously wanting to be a talk show host from such a young age, it's kind of crazy when I got this opportunity on The Real to become the first ever Latina daytime talk show host on English Channel TV, like like English language TV. I've got to be honest with you, when the press release originally went out and they're like, oh, Adrian Malone is the first ever, I actually argued with our PR team and I was like, please make sure that this is correct. I'm going to look so stupid if you guys are clowning me and you're like, nope, you're not the first. To be honest, it was really bittersweet for me. It was such an honor, but at the same time, I was like, how the heck is it 2013 and there has never been a Latina represented on daytime television? Like that to me was really disappointing and at the same time I was like oh my gosh this is an incredible honor but like word we needed to do better 2013 being the first Latina I definitely felt a lot of pressure but in the good way and I also recognize that although I was representing Latinas on TV that didn't necessarily mean that there's only one way to be Latina like that was probably one of the first things I recognized um, when doing this show because there were people that were like, she doesn't sound like me. She doesn't talk like me. Why is she so urban? And I was like, mm, because I'm definitely urban Latina from New York City, born and raised in the projects of the Lower East Side. And I'm always gonna be true to who I am. I'm never gonna try to be, you know, there's so many other dope Latinas, Salma Hayek with an accent. I don't think I, I don't have an accent. I think I have a New York accent. But like, there's not one way to be Latina and this show really taught me that. Some of my favorite things about being on The Real was my dressing room. I took my dressing room very seriously. I had never had one before. I was like, okay, we are going to decorate. I put a faux fireplace in there. We had a Parisian vibe going. I feel like I have the best memories with my glam squad and just my whole team in the dressing rooms. No, we're talking singing Celine Dion at the top of my lungs. Yeah! And then I died. Um, fun fact, now that the show is over, I can also admit to the fact that we absolutely used to drink and take shots of tequila up in our dressing rooms and go down and have the best girl chats ever. Our best shows, Wednesdays was our three show day. And in between show number two and show number three, everyone would come into my dressing room, was the first one up the stairs, 
and I would either have tequila for everybody or we would have champagne. Listen, there was something going on or we would mix drinks, a vodka somebody, and there was even some times that we would actually put a little something in our, in our little coffee mugs. But those sometimes were the most honest, fun, funny conversations. And I think that they were the most relatable because that's how girlfriends chat when they get together. When girls are hanging out and you're having a little courage juice, the truth comes out, something that you maybe would not have shared if you were completely sober. And, and I loved those moments and those memories that we made. In the beginning of the show, the five of us would actually go have lunch together and we'd get cocktails at lunch. And that was such a dope bonding time for us. And I, I really, the one thing I will absolutely miss from being on The Real was the sisterhood that we built. That will forever be my favorite memories. It's not always the things that like were on screen. My favorite memories are the behind the scenes moments of us laughing our ass off, of us sharing the crate. Like we would share a story on the table and then afterwards on commercial break be like, oh, and by the way, this part too. Like what I couldn't say, was this, like we'd lean over to one another and be like, um, you know, let's say the topic was, what's the craziest thing you've ever done to get a man? We'd say whatever our story was and then we'd be like, oh, and by the way, I did that with two guys at this time. Like it was like, like crazy stuff like that. And then we'd die laughing about it. So I will definitely miss that. One thing I will not miss was how early in the morning we had to get up. For all the years that we were live, I easily got up almost every single morning at about four o'clock in the morning. No, Just got no, in the car. No. What's what? up, you guys? Oh yeah, that. It's too early for that. That was rough. That was rough on my social life. That was rough on my marriage. That was rough. A girl was tired, okay? Another thing that I loved, honestly, I loved falling in love with my husband on the show. It's kind of crazy because I have so many dope memories with Israel on stage 10. And I have such an emotional connection to that stage. On the very last day of the reel, Jeannie and I actually snuck back into stage 10 and we just walked around and we cried because it just was the end of an era and I have such amazing nostalgic memories here. And one of my fondest was definitely falling in love with my husband and dating Israel. And he would come to set all the time and like spend lunch with me in my dressing room. I remember him always being at the podium. And so I would be doing my job and I'd look over and he'd randomly surprise me and be there in the morning. And I'd like look over and like be like, oh my God, like he's there. And and that for me, those are memories that I'll never forget. Like I will, I will keep that with me forever. Other things that I really loved about The Real was that we got to speak up for injustice. We got to really tackle the hard conversations that so many people um, couldn't because it was about things that were happening in our community. We could speak about it from a different perspective, from our perspective. And I, I loved that and I'm forever grateful that we were able to give a voice to the voiceless in those times and bring awareness to a lot of things that were being ignored on mainstream media. So I, I'm really, really proud of how we tackled really difficult conversations and brought them to the forefront. And some of our opinions were not, were not popular. And I'm okay with that. I, I think when we started getting to the later seasons, it was kind of crazy just to see how much we had changed from 28 year old, 29 year old Adrian to now almost being 39 years old. It ju it's just night and day. And that was crazy to see the growth and just to see how we've evolved um, from the beginning it was really, really special. There are three specific things that we talked about on The Real that I don't regret saying, but I absolutely regret how they were flipped. I will never forget the headline that came out that said, I can't go more than 12 hours without having sex. That one was like, it felt a little exaggerated. I feel like the headlines went crazy with it. My mom called me like, nana, 12 hours. 
I've been in with you for longer than 12 hours. Who you having sex with? What you, what you doing? They pretty much were like, if I'm with my husband, how often do we have sex and how long can I go without having sex? And I was like, I feel like if you have sex in the morning before you go to work and then you come home and you have sex before you go to bed at night, that's like a good 12 hour turnaround. That's what I was saying. I wasn't saying like if I'm on set all day, I need to call Israel, baby. Get here ASAP, it's 11 hours and 58 minutes and I'm about to go crazy. Like that is not the case. Um, the second one was that I don't wash my hands after using the restroom. This one was the most frustrating because I felt like five seconds later, Corona happened and it was like, she's the one to blame. She is the reason for COVID. And that was really annoying. I feel like it's important to recognize that these segments are like three minutes long. You have to give everyone a chance to speak and you can say half of your thought and then someone else starts talking or you move on and you don't get to have a full explanation for what you're saying. So here goes the full explanation you never saw on the reel. Washing my hands. I felt like everyone lies. Everyone lies and says that they are washing their hands every single time that they use the bathroom in life. And the example that I was trying to use was in my home, in the middle of the night, while being drunk. Now you know good and well you lying if you watching this right now and you say, you're not even sober enough to take your eyelashes off, but you're washing your hands when you go to pee. You're asleep by the toilet. You couldn't even, you're not sober enough to walk to the bed, but you're sober enough to wash your hands. Please stop. Please stop. Clarification, this was always an example for peeing, not number two. Obviously, if you're out somewhere public, you should absolutely wash your hands every single time. If it is the middle of the day and you are, wash your, guys. Hi, my name is Adrian Bylone Houghton, and I'm encouraging you to wash your hands. Also, it makes the conversation on a show like the real, really, really boring if everyone has the exact same opinion. Now that's not to say that I ever took an opposing opinion uh, just to like go against the grain, but if I have a thought or a circumstance, I'm going to bring it up. Does that make sense? Like if I have a like, oh, well this one time, then that makes the conversation interesting. That's what makes us an interesting and entertaining show because if all of us were like, guys, how often do you wash your hands? And everyone at the table was like, every time, all the time, every time, all the time, every, every time, all the time. Yeah, every, every time, all the, every, yeah, you too, me, me too, yeah. That is literally so boring. So I was bringing up the one time I don't to make the conversation interesting. Favorite guest that we've ever had on The Real definitely had to be Jennifer Lopez, the takeover of Jennifer Lopez on the show was like a dream come true for me. I feel like I got into this industry and I really looked up to her because she was someone that I felt like I could relate to. She was a Puerto Rican girl from the Bronx, from New York. I related to um, her style, the way she spoke, the music she listened to, her lingo, her slang. Y'all be trying to tell me I look like her sometimes. Don't gas me. You know, it's, I love Jennifer Lopez. So having her on the show was freaking awesome. Oh, another favorite moment on the reel was Sarah Jessica Parker wishing me a happy birthday. Yo, the way that took me out, you guys know I love Sex in the City. And I just felt like Carrie Bradshaw popped up on the screen, said my name out loud, and I, I just couldn't take it. That was one of my favorite moments. If you missed it, here it goes. You guys, we actually have one more fabulous lady who wanted to wish you a happy birthday too. Hi, Adrian. It's Sarah Jessica Parker. What? And I've been asked by Get all of my friends way. and colleagues at The Real, happy birthday, much love, and I hope it's a wonderful, wonderful Ooh. year. That is crazy. That is the best birthday gift ever. If you watch today's farewell episode, you will see that we were very emotional. I think it's important to explain why I in particular was emotional. It's crazy because leading up to it, I was like, I'm definitely not gonna cry. 
I'm definitely not gonna cry because I feel like, you know, we made our mark. I was at complete peace with the show ending because guys, I spent literally almost a decade on the show and I was ready and I'm excited for what's next. And in the moment, I was like, there's nothing to cry about. Like this is, you know, it's, it's, it's the end of an era, but it's also a celebration of what the show has done. To some extent, we have a trauma bond of being a part of this show because it was not easy. It was not easy bearing your soul, going through the changes of the cast members, uh, being attacked in the comments sometimes or because of the things that we shared. And it was, it was really hard and it made us stronger and it made us tougher and it made us wiser and it made us the women that we are today. So that's where all those emotions definitely came from. One of my favorite stories that I was like, oh, I wish we did more of these kinds of stories was um, this incredible story. It's actually really sad, but at the same time, it, it's, it was just a beautiful moment. A mother who had actually lost her three-year-old son uh, in a tragic accident, and he was an organ donor, and actually they used his heart to save the life of another young man this was gonna be the first time that the mother was meeting the young boy who now had her son's heart beating in his chest. And they actually had the son and his family, the mom come out, and then the, the boy and his family come out, and we had a stethoscope. And she actually was able to put it on this boy's heart and hear her son's heart beating. And it was, such a moving moment. I, I can't even explain it, but like those are the kinds of stories that I would love um, to talk about. I would love things like that. I'd love to see families become reunited. I haven't seen my, you know, my long lost sister in 20 something years. I love the Sally Jesse Raphael connected Chili to her father. Like I loved that sort of thing. So if I ever got a chance to host my own talk show, it would definitely be more of those vibes. Uh, guys. The first, the first two seasons of The Real, we were playing games. We were playing tug of weave It was literally a long weave. And like we were pulling, like we used to joke around and say, no one does stupid better than us in daytime. And we took real pride in that. I will speak for myself. I took real pride in being fun, silly, um, honest, like too, too honest for my own good. I will tell you every and anything about myself. I think it got difficult when I had to start talking about other people's lives and I just felt like I had no business doing that. I'm an Emmy award winning daytime talk show host because of the real. Like this has been amazing. I hope you enjoyed the last decade I spent telling you guys every single thing. Now you can tune in here for that. But I love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next week. Mwah. Peace. I should hit this. I should. I, 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 by the way, we never got to find out who sang that song and I always wanted to cover it. <laughs>